first day that I ever came here, I got off the bus at the Brown Bobby with Stuart Bennett, um, who, I'm, who, who was a, a year ahead of me here. Uh, and, and Stuart said, right, well, the game is, you've got to get between the bus and uh, the art school um, without using the main roads. So it was a case of going through all of the sort of little back lanes and cut throughs and, and what have you that really introduced you to an alternative Douglas. Uh, you know, I came from Peel, uh, so you only ever came into Douglas as a treat. And to actually then have Douglas as your, uh, um, essentially the landscape that you were going to work in, uh, um, it, was, um, it was a great eye-opener. Well, I came in here in, for the first time in September in 1967. The things that I did in here and the people that I met in here for the two years that I was here on doing foundation course with Norman Sale changed me absolutely as, a, as an individual uh, and the, they really changed the sort of course of my future life. They, essentially they made me who I became. Uh, so really the influence of what you thought art and design was actually happened here in this room for, with very little sort of outside influences. I'm standing here now where my table was and I'm actually thinking about a night uh, because we never went home. We, we were thrown out at nine o'clock each night. Uh, um, Chris Berry reminded me the other day that Norman sometimes had to apologise to us because we had to go home because he had an evening class or something like that. And he was apologetic that he turned us out before nine o'clock each night. But I remember sitting here uh, and really at the beginning of the course, I couldn't get a handle on, um, on, on what I should be doing. I didn't understand. I couldn't grasp uh, the, the sort of strange concepts that I was being asked to sort of take in. And I sat here one night and I looked out of that window and I made a drawing. And it was that drawing really, the vigorous nature of the drawing uh, and the way that it sort of caught this space here. That drawing really was my start on the course. And I remember pinning it on the wall there. Uh, and next day when people came in, everybody went to the drawing. And they said, who did this drawing? And it was, and it was me. And, and for the first time, I wasn't peripheral. I was at the center of something. And I thought, right, I've made a start. I've got to hang on to this now. I've got to somehow build on the, on the, on the, the capital that I've invested in this drawing. And really, that's where, that's where my ball started rolling. Here, pinned on that wall there, looking out of that window there. As you came in through this door here, which is the door that we came in each morning and left at nine o'clock each evening, um, there was a partition here that ran perhaps to here and then perhaps this way. And this was, um, this was the life drawing room. Uh, and that's, I mean, that's, you know, that's a big deal when you've just come from uh, a boys' school. Life drawing is quite a rite of passage. So I went out and got a, a piece of thorn tree, I think, uh, and, and hung it on that wall over there, and then arranged a, a, a tank of water that allowed water to drip onto it, you know, a sort of drip every couple of, drip every half a minute or something like that. And then I arranged spotlights on the drips so that it was almost like you were forced to look at the reflection of the room in the drips. And I thought, I called it the most beautiful thing in the world by Ian Coulson, because I thought it was just so gorgeous to, to draw your attention to the tiniest thing that I could sort of imagine, you know? This space here was was open and there was a small printing press in here uh, and we did little bits of screen printing in here so this wall wasn't here and there was a sort of a, a low wall here where the steps went down and then down into what where the sculpture room and the 
the pottery was. We didn't call it ceramics, it was the pottery. Uh, and at the bottom of the stairs here, there was um, essentially a little island, uh, a, a room that was a little island between the, um, uh, the um, corridor through to the sculpture room and, and whatever. And the, the, that was a little room that um, Mr. Miney, the caretaker, um, uh, inhabited. And uh, the guy who has the sweeping brush usually runs the place. And I've always said to my students that you need to, as soon as you get in anywhere, you need to start to make friends with the caretaker and the cleaners because they're the most influential people in the place. Uh, and particularly now that, um, you know, where, where tutors are difficult to find on art courses, uh, uh, the caretaker is the man who's got the keys and he will be the fellow who will make a difference as to whether your work gets made or not. So make friends with the caretaker. Let's go down. And here then would be a, a narrow room that was um, the sculpture room. And really it was, you know, perhaps 10 feet wide. Uh, and it would just had modeling stands in it, maybe 10 modeling stands. And you could get a, a lump of clay from, uh, uh, from the pottery and whack it on your modeling stand. Uh, and then make whatever you wanted. Um, now I, I couldn't get on with clay. I'm not, I've just got an absolute antipathy for the bloody stuff. I can't, just can't do it. Uh, um, and so I could never make anything that sort of satisfied me. Uh, and Morris would sort of sit there on, uh, propped up on a, um, a stool and uh, would uh, <laughs> tell you what was good or bad about whatever it was that you were doing. And really, it was so such an amorphous, uh, such an amorphous group of concepts. I couldn't get my head around it, and so I would, often enough, be up in the main studio making sculpture out of timber, out of wood, out of um, uh, you know whatever I could lay my hands on. Uh, uh, so I, I made my sculpture in the absence of the sculpture teacher which, you know, um, now I think about it, I'm, I'm sorry about. But at the time I wasn't sorry, I needed the freedom to be away from this bloody grey clay stuff. This was the studio that the advertising and design students worked in with um, Eric Hulgrave. It was, you know, if you can imagine it, before ever a computer was even thought of. All lettering was hand-drawn. So up in this room there were students who, working on tiny little pieces of paper, were producing the most exquisite um, uh, hand-drawn lettering, hand-drawn and coloured lettering using gouache and, uh, and that sort of stuff. And they were... I, I was just lost in admiration for what they could do, but particularly Hooley, Eric Hillgrave, his, um, his uh, sort of memorial um, uh, pieces of calligraphy that, uh, that, use, uh, that use very beautiful uh, writing uh, calligraphy with watercolour scenes and gilding and things like that. He was, he was immense and uh, he would come up from, the, um, from down in the pottery, you know, with, with clay up his arms and all the rest of it, just rub his hands like this and then get to work on the most exquisite things. He was, he was, he was a, an amazing uh, man. Norman Sale, uh, Eric, Morris, Morris particularly, would take your opinions, your concerns as 16, 17 year olds seriously and that they would treat you as adults and this was so completely different to the education that uh, I'd had at uh, Douglas, Boys, uh, uh, Douglas High School for Boys, where really you you know you were you were you were a bucket to be filled with information, uh, and what you thought of that information was of no interest to them at all. What Norman did, I think, was a kind of alchemy. I can't I can't actually get my head around the, his composition, his use of colour, his um, uh, choice of subjects, even you know. The, um, the, the, sort of beyond me but I, I wanted to um, 
I wanted to do something about Douglas uh, onto the, to the, the paper that I bought. And I'm now, this is one that I started uh, yesterday uh, and will finish tomorrow. And this is the last one that I will do. Uh, I think I'm on a, about number 95 now with this painting. And I've got one sheet of Norman's watercolour left, which I will leave untouched because Norman always said that there's nothing more exciting than a, a, a clean piece of drawing paper and a newly sharpened pencil, but paradoxically, there's nothing more frightening too. So that's, that's going to remain as it is. Uh, and this one is my sort of goodbye to this building, really. Um, uh, and I've chosen to do it as a sort of a nine o'clock in the evening study, uh, looking down the back lane, you know, you could go home or you could stay at art school, and we chose to stay at art school. Uh, and so this is, this is my sort of evocation, really, of this place at night um, with, with me um, in the image. Thank you.